In this video, we're going to be comparing two security cameras. These security cameras have a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. The first camera is the Floodlight Cam E340, the second one being the Solo Cam S340. So if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Do It Yourself Dad channel, and welcome to Tech Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, we give unbiased tech reviews, Wednesday we do tool reviews, and on the weekends, we do DIY videos. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Now in this video, I'm gonna be going over all the features of these cameras, comparing the two of them, and then at the very end, going over the pros and cons of each, so you can make a decision if one of these cameras is the right camera for you. Now, like I said, both of these cameras have a lot of similarities. If you notice here on the camera end of these cameras, it has two lenses, and that's because one lens is a wide angle lens and the other one is a 3x zoom lens. These also give the ability to digitally zoom out to 8x, but once you're digitally zooming, you're cropping the image and losing a little bit of resolution. Now the wide angle lens on these is a 3K lens. The zoom lens is a 2K lens, so it's a 2K resolution at three times optical zoom, which means you're not getting that crop going on. You can zoom it in further, but you are gonna be getting a little bit of a crop, which means you're dropping your resolution each time you zoom. Now, the biggest difference between these cameras is how they're powered. This one, I'll show you the install right now. This one is powered by your home wiring. This takes the place of a regular floodlight. Now, I do have other videos on the channel showing how to install a light on the side of your house into existing wiring. So if you need that, I will have a link down below. Now, the one on the front of the house is the solar one, and that's powered differently. So the one here on the front of my house is powered by a solar panel. There is no wiring. So there's a battery on board, it charges during the day, and it uses up that battery at night to power the camera, and it also powers the light. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of each in terms of how they're powered. Since this camera is always powered, it means a couple of things. It means that one, these lights can function all the time, so you can have them running day and night, it's not gonna deplete a battery. And it also means that since it's not running on a battery, these things do have the ability to continuously loop record. You can actually put an SD card in it, or if you have it hooked to your base station, if you have a base station, you can record straight to the base station and continuously loop record. Now, in the case of these solar ones, you don't have the same options. That light only comes on when it senses motion and the light is not nearly as bright as the other one. I'll show that in a little bit when we do the night shots, but that's because it's running on a battery. It just simply doesn't have enough power stored on board to keep it going. It also doesn't continuously record. What it does is when it senses motion, it turns on that light if you've selected that option and then it'll record the motion and then it shuts down when it doesn't. So it doesn't give you a constant light, the light just turns on and off. Now I just brought up the base station. The base station does not come with either of these cameras, but it's not necessary. If you have a base station or you want to upgrade to a base station, you can. You can see here I have the Home Base 3, and it, these hook to the Home Base 3, not the Home Base 2, so you do need the 3. But you have the option of hooking it to the Home Base 3, or you can hook it straight to your home's router. Now the upside to going to here is this has a hard drive in it and it stores all your footage inside your home secure, versus the other ones will be storing it on an SD card on the side of the house. These also give you the edge AI, so your artificial intelligence when it's trying to decide what's a person and what's a fire hydrant, what's a trash can, is gonna work a little bit better on that. Now I just mentioned AI, or artificial intelligence. Now what that means in terms of these cameras, these aren't gonna go Terminator, they're not gonna try to take over your home, but what it does is it takes the image and it sorts it out and figures out whether there's a person in the image to help eliminate false alarms, which is a really good thing. When I've had older cameras, the wind blows the trees, it gives you an alarm that it senses motion, you check it, and it's the wind. So this will help filter out, and you can actually select whether you want it to tell you if it's a vehicle, a pet, or an animal, uh, or a person. Now, the AI in the base station does work a little bit better than the AI on the cameras. When I had the cameras set, to the Wi-Fi mode, not going through my base station. I was getting some false alarms in the front yard. It thought one of my little lights in the front yard was a person. And in the side yard, it kept thinking my trash cans were people. Now the workaround to this is you can actually set up privacy zones, which is a little black box in the app you can put over something. And you just put that little black box over the thing it keeps confusing as a person, and it'll eliminate the false alarm. But if you attach it to the home base three, it does a better job filtering and I haven't had nearly as many false alarms, almost none, since I attached it to the home base three. Now that AI does something else really neat. It gives it tracking. So these cameras, like I showed before, have that 360 degree panning camera on the bottom of it. So once it locks onto an object, it can follow that object. And because it has two lenses, it not only follows it, but it gives you the ability after the fact to look at that object and zoom in on it. So you can zoom in on somebody's face, 
or onto a license plate or anything like that. So I guess now it's time to really start testing out the cameras and seeing how well they perform. And let's start with the license plate test. And the license plate test is pretty simple. Take a license plate and I'm going to walk back and see how far we can read it. Now this is exactly as it records out of the app. The top screen there is the regular camera and then the bottom screen there is the telephoto camera. And you can see they're both keeping trained on me. It's really important to keep trained on me because we're going back about 65 feet. Now it's difficult to see here, but in just a second, I'm gonna show you the digital cropping as well, and we'll see how well we can make out that license plate at a distance. So here's the video as it displays on the phone, and I have it zoomed in here, and I'm kind of zooming back and forth within the 3X. So right there, I'm at the end of my driveway, and I'm backing up a little bit further, and here's where I start having to use the cropping. So now we're actually cropping and losing resolution, but you can still pretty well make out all the letters, even as I get all the way out to 65 feet. And just to give you a matter of perspective, this is what the image looked like at 1x zoom. So the next test is the delay test to see how long it takes between moving into the detection zone and actually getting an alert on our phone. So I've got my phone up here. We're gonna walk around the corner into my side yard into the detection zone and see how long it takes. So I'm gonna hold my phone up. We are crossing and we are in the detection zone now. and there's our alert. So it does take a few seconds between when it senses something and it actually sending an alert to us. Now, whether that is an acceptable amount of time is up to you. Now I have to hold my camera on my phone, so I can't hold a stopwatch too. So I'm gonna put down here on the bottom of the screen how long that took. Okay, so now we're gonna perform the same test on the camera in the front, the solar one, crossing into the zone now. And right there, that was my alert. So it looks like they were about the same time. I'm gonna leave the timestamp down here at the bottom to see how long it took. Now it's past my bedtime, but I need to show you how these things work in the dark. And we're gonna start by showing you the lights on the two of these, because these both have lights on board. Now this is the one that is hooked into power and it has two very large lights on the side. Now right now it is in the motion activated mode. So this is how bright I have it set if it detects motion. Now I only have this set at about 15% and it has a little slider here in the app. You can set how bright or dim you want it. So right now it's at about 15% and when I have the thing set for nobody's around, I have it down here around 5%. Now you remember when we set this thing up, there were stickers over the lights and that was a warning to not look into the lights when you were setting it up. Now let me show you why. We're gonna crank it all the way up. That's how bright this thing is with the lights all the way on. Now this is totally overkill for my side yard and uh, my camera already did a little bit of correction because of how bright it is, but this is totally overkill for my side yard. But if you're doing it over a driveway, this would be perfect. It would illuminate everything nice and safely. So you're not tripping over stuff getting out of your car. So now I'm out here in my front yard. We're dealing with just some ambient light and I'm gonna turn on the light from the app. Now you can see here, the light is not as bright as the one in my side yard. And that's really because this thing is powered by a solar panel and a battery. So it doesn't have a constant supply of power. It can't have a really bright light. It would just nuke the battery. Now this light does give actually plenty of light in my driveway to be able to see, not trip over things, and certainly alert a bad guy if they're up here trying to do some bad stuff to your car. Is it as bright as the one in my side yard that has constant power? No, it's not. So if you're looking for something that's very bright, right? That's the way you want to go. The other thing with this one is this only triggers the light when it senses motion. That's again because it's solar powered and it can't go through the battery. So if you want a safety light over your driveway, you're not going to want to go with the solar one. On the flip side, you don't have to run any wires for this thing, so that's a plus. So now we're going to repeat the notification test that we did during the daylight hours here at night. So we're walking down the street in front of my house and we're going to cross into the detection zone. Hold our phone up right here so we can see it. Detection zone happens right around here. And there's my alert. So like I said before, I don't have a stopwatch that I can use while I'm holding a camera and the phone. So I'm gonna put the time down there. You can see how long it took between when we crossed the detection zone to when we actually got an alert on our phone. Now let's do the exact same thing with that side yard camera. All right, it is very dark out but we're gonna do the exact same test with our side yard camera. So we've got our phone up here. We are coming around the corner and we are entering the detection zone now. 
I'm just going to keep walking. There's the buzz and there is the alert. So again, I'll put the time right down at the bottom for how long it took between us hitting the detection zone and getting the alert. Now let's take a look at what kind of footage these things are capturing in the dark. Now the setup on these is very simple and I've done a ton of UV setup videos on the channel before. I'll have those linked down below, but you do it all through the app. You download the app and you add the device. Now all the instructions on these are included in the app, in those instructions. It even goes so far as to show you how to wire this thing up and turning off circuit breakers. And it usually comes with all the hardware you need it. Well, I will note that on this one, because I have an older house and I have stucco, the hardware that it came with wasn't long enough. I had to source slightly longer hardware to get this thing to mount. So depending upon the kind of construction you have, you may need to get some other hardware to get this one to mount. The other one just surface mounts on the outside of the house. So now it's time to compare both cameras and talk about the pros and cons of each so you can make a decision for yourself. Now each one of these cameras is very similar, but they are also very different. Now if you have a situation where you already have wiring in place and you're replacing the existing light, I think this one is the way to go. You don't have to worry about exposure to the sun, how the solar panel is placed, or how often this thing activates and depleting the battery. The lights are very, very powerful and you can run the thing pretty much non-stop without a worry because it has that constant power. On the other hand, the solar powered light is a great alternative if you don't have wiring that you can tap straight into. On the front of my house, I don't have any wiring and I don't have any lights. So I don't have a light that I can take down and replace with a new one. This gives me the ability to have a light and a pan tilt camera on the front of the house that's solar powered. Now, you do need to have solar exposure for that solar panel to work. And you see right now I have it mounted on the top of the camera. It also does come with a extension wire where you can mount the panel remotely if you need to do that if you don't have good sun exposure. Now where I am right here, I have a tree that blocks part of my sun. So I really get most of my sun in the second half of the day. And that's actually been enough to keep this thing fully charged for the last month I've been running it. It only takes about two hours of direct sunshine to completely charge the battery back up. Now the major con to this one is the fact that you can't have a light running all the time. So if you want a light to kind of illuminate your driveway, this is not the light for you because this thing only comes on when it does have power. It also doesn't do that loop recording. So you do sacrifice that for the ease of not having to run hard wiring to your camera. Now a question that I've gotten a lot on a lot of the other cameras that we've had on the channel is do they support continuous recording and the plug-in version does as you can see here. The solar version does not on the solar one you just get recorded clips when it senses motion. Now as far as ease of installation goes that is really a your decision not a my decision. In my case both of these were very easy to install. Doing this kind of work is not a big deal for me but if you're not comfortable with electrical work and you might have to hire an electrician that is a concern if you're going with one of these versus the other one that you can just screw into the wall. Now in comparing the camera itself, I did a lot of downloading footage and zooming in on footage and I honestly didn't find a difference in resolution or image quality between the two cameras. And that would mean on both of these cameras you have a 3K camera, a 2K camera, a 3X optical zoom and an 8X digital zoom as well as a 360 pan and tilt. So you are pretty much getting the same camera in both cameras. And then of course there's the cost. Now this camera, the solar camera, is coming in right around $200. Whereas this one is coming in at around $220. So they're relatively close in price and you're getting a little bit of different features with each camera. Now like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, both of these cameras are very similar, but they're both very different as well. So which camera is the better camera? I don't know, flip a coin. It really comes down to how you plan on using the camera and where you plan on installing it. Now if you have any questions about these cameras, I'm always happy to answer those questions down in the comments below. I've been using these cameras for quite some time. I've got a lot of experience with them as well as the other Eufy line of cameras. So if you've got specific questions, please feel free to go down below and ask them. I'm always answering questions in the comment section. Now I will leave links for both of these cameras down below. So if you're interested in them, you can check out those links. If I find any coupon codes, I always throw those down below because I want to save you money wherever I can. Now if this video helped you out, please give it a great big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because we always have videos just like this and a lot of other DIY videos on the channel. Of course, thanks for watching.